Hello, welcome again. Our first module was designed to get your mind in gear, to stretch your sense of possibility, to get you authentically and genuinely excited because it's very exciting where we're going to take you over the next modules. So today we're going to start getting a little deeper, but I believe the first, the first priorities are always to get you very solidly grounded. So today we're gonna to talk about drivers of performance. Because no matter what kind of a business you decide to go into or pursue or acquire or partner with, you're going to have to know how to maximize performance. Now, why are you gonna to have to know that? Because your advantage in business, it results from your ability to gain higher and better outcome performance results from time, from effort, from access, meaning ads or calling on somebody one-on-one -on -one or being at a trade show. And you can't get higher results or performance if you don't first understand some of the principles that drive everything. Now, I believe in the last module, and I may not have done this, but I think so, I explained to you that 2% of what happens to people in business are what we would call acts of God. It just means things you can't control. 2%. 98% are the result of actions you take or don't take, of decisions you make or don't make, and of factors and forces and principles and, and elements that either you understand and control or that you allow to control you. My goal by the end of the last module is to see Everybody that is taking this, starting some kind of an enterprise, full-time, part-time, having the highest level of success possible and being able to multiply that long-term towards something rather wonderful and rewarding for them. Cannot happen if you don't understand. It's like building a... A building. If you don't understand the laws of construction, architecture, uh, support beams, you can't build anything that will be strong, tall, enduring. Same thing with any business. So let's look at drivers. And by drivers, I refer to power principles that drive up performance, that are critical to maximizing performance. There are a lot of drivers. I'm gonna start with one category and then we're gonna to move to another. So the first set of drivers are what I call the macro drivers. These are the key elements that give you in whatever business you want to pursue the maximum advantage for the minimum effort. These are the ones that even if you don't absolutely understand them masterfully, but you utilize them, they will increase your results. The first one is strategy. Most people in business in your part of the world are very tactical. They just do things for the moment. They don't have a master game plan that is driving or fueling or directing everything they do. If you start with the end in mind, and the end doesn't mean when you die, it means when you get your business built to the success level you want. And remember, you can have a part-time business to start with, you can have a, a small business you're going to grow, you can have a business you're going to use as an acquisition vehicle and end up acting acquiring or or opening 25 more but you start somewhere but you know where you're headed 
And everything you do, every action you take, every decision you make, every activity you put energy, time, or money in is designed to strategically advance and enhance this outcome. Now, why is that important? Well, first of all, because nobody you compete against is strategic. So you will be far and away, way, way above everyone else in how you think. Secondly, most people just do a bunch of random things occasionally and they don't really come together towards this bigger outcome. If you have a business model, meaning the whole concept of how your business operates, that is being driven, fueled, and propelled by a great strategy, and that everything you do, your marketing, your promotion, your your website, your salespeople are congruent and consistent with this master strategy, everything you do is going to produce a much greater initial and a mammoth greater ongoing effect. Let me try to explain. First of all, most people don't have good business models. What does that mean? It means that they're just trying to sell something. A good business model is a very well thought out strategy. For example, if your strategic business model was that we want to do the easiest offering to our market that will get them to start a relationship with us because we know that the sooner we start a relationship, the sooner we will get our first sale. And the sooner we get our first sale, the sooner we will get our second sale and our third sale so that we want to make it easier to start a relationship with us than not. And your strategy was to go into various types of markets and marketing, whether it's knocking on doors, whether it's running ads, whether it's search engine, whether it's trade shows, and make offers that are irresistibly easy to accept so that you can build a relationship and move people to the sell and the resell. You have a great advantage over people that are just trying to sell. If your business model is to get people started easily and non-threateningly, move them to the first sale, add, if you have multiple products, more products to that first sale, add, if you have uh, a product that is highly reconsumptive, meaning they buy it, they use it, they buy it again, ongoing structure that helps the buyer, the client, keep buying over and over again, add more products or services so that they go, they buy longer periods and they buy more things and you make more profit, all of a sudden you are thinking at a, a heightened level of strategic discipline than your competitor. And I've done a lot of work on strategy, and we are going to include in the workbook some clarified and, and, um, and deeper discussion. But I wanted to start because there are all these drivers, these we call them leverage points or impact points, that if you understand them, they power up, they catapult up not just the performance, and that's very important, not just the result, that's very important, not just the profit, that's very important, but your probability of being successful. Well, I've, I've created in my life a, a many, 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 a multitude of different uh, sets of principles, sets of marketing laws, sets of... of um, uh, high performance distinctions, but one of the ones I created 20 years ago was very simple, very self-evident, 
but very infrequently practiced. It was the following. Make success a higher probability in everything you do than failure. Now, that seems so obvious, but people make failure a higher probability in everything they do than success because they don't know how to think strategically and they don't know how to think critically. By the time we are done, you will know how to do both in a masterful way. I'm not going to get into all the strategy here, but we will give you in the workbook great, great lessons on strategy, examples, and uh, powerful, powerful uh, uh, ways for you to adapt or adopt different strategies to whatever it is you do. But the point is, if you are not strategic, the moment you become strategic, everything you do starts rising in its success, its performance, its results, its profit. If you are strategic, every time you make your strategy better, it's not like that, it's like that. So the first driver that I tell everyone, they have to make sure they are clear on is knowing first what their strategy is, second, making sure they are always being strategic, and that means they never do anything that doesn't advance, enhance, and multiply this big long-term goal or game they are playing called business. So you, if you're not strategic, first thing is you have to become strategic. If you are strategic, the next thing you have to constantly do is improve your strategy and keep making it perform higher and harder for you. There is a belief that I have that I want very much for you to possess. Either you work very hard for your business, which is what most people do, or you create purposely you engineer uh, intentionally, you mastermind uh, thoroughly a business model strategy that works harder and harder for you. It's totally possible, but you can't just wish it. You have to understand these forces, these factors, these decisions, these actions that you need to take or control. So. Change your strategy or become strategic and you will positively change your results in the workbook that will be examples. An example, an example. Next is change your marketing and you will change your results. And this gets into a really vast area of possibility. Let me explain. Most companies, whether you're a little service company doing it part-time, whether you're a large company and you grow or buy it, they are terrible marketers. And they are ter mar terrible marketers for a number of reasons. Reason one is they don't understand the purpose of marketing. Reason two, if they understand the purpose of marketing, they don't understand how to engineer and how to communicate their marketing message in a powerful way that causes the prospective buyer to be positively impacted and want badly to start a relationship. Number three, if they understand that, they don't understand how to move that buyer to take action. Number four, if they understand how to get them to take action, they don't understand how to keep them taking action. Number five, most people don't understand the laws of marketing. So let me give you a little bit about marketing. Again, we're talking about high performance drivers. Strategy first, marketing second. So let's get into this a little bit. And in the workbook, you're going to see uh, the three way to grow a business model. You're going to see the power Parthenon model. 
you're going to see uh, some of the very different ways that you can apply each of the three ways to grow a business. And you're going to see the advanced three ways to grow a business. But I am going to right now share with you a little bit about that. So most people come to me and say, oh, Jay, there must be a trillion ways to grow a business. And my response is always, actually, there are a trillion tactics that are available and can be compartmentalized into three basic activities. It's only three ways to grow any business. One is you figure out how to find and convert more prospects to buyers. Number two, you figure out when you convert prospects to buyers, how to get them to buy larger units of purchase each time they buy. Number three, you figure out how to get buyers to keep coming back more often to buy more. And if you don't have a lot of other things to sell, you figure out other complementary products or services that you can either acquire, get rights to, do private label or joint ventures so you have ongoing revenue. The goal of a business is not to keep finding new buyers all the time that never buy again. It's to keep finding buyers who come in, start buying, buy again and again and again. And so you have a base and keep doing it so you keep building that base higher and higher so that you create predictable future revenue that you have certainty will keep coming in for two reasons. One, that's your security. That's your, uh, your, um, your financial uh, solidarity. But number two, a business that has predictable ongoing revenue has value to others. So not only are you creating for yourself a significant income that is predictable and recurring and sustainable, you're creating a massive wealth asset that you could sell to anybody else in the future because it has predictable future revenue. Now, I don't want to get too deep because in the workbook, we show you the three way to grow business model and we show you how unbelievably powerful the leverage is in working them all. Let me talk about the power Parthenon because it is equally as important and it is very rarely understood or practiced by anyone. So the power Parthenon is a very simple but a very powerful uh, way of of not just doing business, but owning the category of business you do. And what does it mean? Most businesses that I have looked at worldwide remind me of a diving board. And I'm going to do a, a, a visual, but you'll go to your workbook. So a diving board is a, here's a pedestal. Here's the board. The board is the revenue. It's the turnover, whatever you call it there that people generate. The pillar that supports the board is the one singular way of selling or marketing that most companies do, and it's different. Some have sales forces. Some go to trade shows. Some run ads in magazines. Some do pay-per-click or SEO. Uh, some do... Uh, I don't know if they do direct mail anymore in your country, but some do direct mail or catalogs. Some have distributors. But most companies have one primary approach or source of doing business, and that's it. If anything happens to that source, the competitor pays more to get access to marketing or a competitor 
hires away your top salesperson or your top salesperson quits and either does something else or quits and competes against you, if that's the only way you're doing business, you're compromised. So what I try to get everybody I ever help to do, and I'm going to be heartfelt to get you to do this with any business you start, create, buy, partner with, is to create multiple pillars that reach your target market from many different ways. In your workbook, there is a very strong example, and it's just for reference. There's lots of ways you can do it, but if, for example, you started your business just by either having yourself or someone else be the salesperson, and that was the only way you generated business, you would want to try to add many more approaches, and let's call them pillars. One approach could be online marketing. One approach could be getting articles published in online and offline media. One approach could be finding organizations or other companies that sell to the same market who would partner for you. One approach could be starting to go to conferences and trade shows. One approach would be building a systematic referral generating system. One approach would be getting a book written not to make money from, but just to make you a icon in your industry. And I can go on and on, but the points I'm making are if you want to build a business, you, honestly, more than some of the people already in business, have a great advantage because you're starting it's like a canvas and you're an artist. You can paint any kind of picture you want. Or it's a glob of clay and you're a sculptor. You can sculpt anything you want. And if you start with the knowledge that the competition doesn't have, if you start with the commitment to only do things that have a much, much higher success probability, you already are way ahead. Now, we're still talking... I'm trying to show you how easy this will be once you put it all together. And I also want to tell you that I need time to build this right. And if we do it together right, by the time we're done, you will be so uh, deeply and masterfully trained. You will have the knowledge of what and where and how the best opportunity for this moment is and where you can take it you will be able to control your destiny. A lot of people say, I'm going to teach you in, in 90 minutes how to make a million dollars. That is not a true reality. I'm going to teach you through the modules we will go through together and the workbook we have created to support you.